This video covers section 1.3, Verbal and Symbolic Representations. Let's return to the idea of input-output tables. Some people refer to algebra as the science of patterns. To help you find patterns, we can use input-output tables. You probably have a little bit of experience of this from yesterday. Our goal now is to use input-output tables to help describe these patterns. For example, let's take a look at the following fat pattern. I have four figures here. The first figure is made up of these two blocks, the second these four, the third these six, and the four these eight. So I'm going to make an input-output table where the input is the figure number and the output is the area of the figure, basically how many of these little blocks are in here. So there are four of them in the second figure, there are six of them in the third, there are eight of them in the fourth. How many would be in the fifth? Do you see the pattern here? Every time I'm adding two, putting on two blocks at the end. So there would be maybe 10 here. Can you describe a relationship between the input and output in words? Well, if you look at these numbers, you'll notice when the input is one, the output is two. When the input is two, the output is four. When the input is three, the output is six, and so on. So one way to describe this is that the output is twice the input. Another way to describe it, maybe a little bit more mathematically, is the output is two times the input. So. Let's see, how do we make a rule in general? One of the things we can do is look for a pattern. You might want to follow these steps. Match each input with the output and describe what we do to the input number to the obtain the output. Let's take a look at the petting zoo example we looked at yesterday. Petting zoo example, you might remember we created pens in this square pattern. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an input output table for the number of fences needed to fit a given number of animals. We're going to assume one animal per pen. In this picture, we would fit four animals, and we would need one, two, three, four fences, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen fences in order to do that. Now, let's take a look at an input-output table. For one pen, we would need four fences. For two, we would need seven. We saw this from yesterday. For three, we would need 10. For four, we would need 13. We kind of see that pattern. Now, one way to think about this, like we thought yesterday, was to say this was four for the first animal and three for the second. This was four for the first animal and three for the second and the third. Another way to write that is four plus three times 2. 13, we would have 4 for the first animal, 3 for the second, 3 for the third, 3 for the fourth. So this would be 4 for the first animal plus 3, how many times? 3 times. Do you notice a relationship between the input and the output here? With 2, this was 4 plus 3. We could also write this as 3 times 1. With 3, this is 4 plus 3 times 2. You'll notice that 3 and 2 there. 4 animals, we have 4 plus 3 times 3. So what would you guess for 10? Well, I would guess 4 plus 3 times, each of these have a 4 plus 3 in them. The only thing that's changing is this last number here. And you'll notice this last number is 1 less than the input one less than the input. So I do four plus three times nine. Of course, four plus three times nine is four plus 27, which is 31. For 100, what would we need then? Well, if we're gonna follow this pattern, you'd need four for your first animal, and I'd need three for each additional animal. How many additional animals do we have? We have 99. Now, if you do 4 plus 3 times 99, I'll let you do that arithmetic. If you do that, you end up with 301 fences needed. 
So how can you describe the relationship in words? You could say the output, the number of fences, is 4 plus 3 times 1 less than the input. Put in context, you might say the number of fences is 4 plus 3 times 1 less than the number of animals. Now that's kind of cumbersome to write that all out with words. So mathematicians like to write this using variables. A variable is nothing more than a letter or symbol that can represent any number from some set. An equation is a statement of a quality between two quantities. An equal side separates the quantities. For example, our first example was the input-output table where the output was two times the input. If we let the output be represented by the variable y, and we let the input be represented by the variable x, then we can write this as the output is two times the input. In my second example, I had output, the number of fences. You don't have to use x and y. I might use something like this. I might let f be the number of fences. And I might a be the number of animals. And here I said my fences is 4 times, or 4 plus, excuse me, 3 times the number of animals minus 1. Now, since I want to multiply 3 times the number of animals minus 1, I'm going to write it down this way. And that is a way to write down that pattern, or that expression, algebraically. You might take a look in your book at page 22 to see agreements on ways to write multiplication in algebra. Let's practice. Okay, I want you to write some equations using these descriptions. You might want to pause the video now for a moment, and then when you come back, I'll explain how to do these. Okay, part A, to get the area of a rectangle, we multiply length times width. So area is length times width. Multiply base B and height H to get the area of a parallelogram. So I might multiply base B times height H and say that's equaling A, the area of a parallelogram. To get the area of a triangle, notice they didn't give you a variable this time. You would have to come up with one. You're going to multiply 1 half B and H. So if I let A be the area of the triangle, I could say A equals 1 half times B times H. To get the A, the area of a square, we multiply the length S by itself. A, we could say, is S times S. Now, it's a little cumbersome to write this down this way, so we often write that down S squared, like that. Multiply pi and the square of r, okay, to get a, the area of a circle. Pi and r squared, that's what they mean by square of r, is equaling a, the area of a circle. These formulas that I've just given you are very, very common, and you should be familiar with them. One of the most difficult things that students say about algebra is solving word problems. What a word problem is, is basically an application problem where you might use algebra to help you solve it. 
The most difficult part of the process of solving a word problem is translating words to symbols. Here's some, sim some terms that we use in algebra to help us with this. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. Difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And quotient is the answer to a division problem. English is not that precise a language. So here's some additional words that might be used as synonyms for translation. Addition, or sum, might be called plus, or added to, or increased by, or greater by, or more than. Subtraction might be a minus b, a less b, a minus b, a decreased by b. b minus a is the same as a less than b, or a fewer than b. Multiplication, we might use the word times, or double, half, twice, triple, so on. And quotient, or division, might say divide in half, divide by half, or split, or share equally. So here's a few definitions that help us with writing expressions and equations. A constant is a number, letter, or symbol whose value is fixed. For example, a number like 3 or pi. An expression is a combination of signs, numbers, constants, and variables with operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. A numerical coefficient is a sign and a number multiplying the variable or variables. Let's look at an example of this. What is this right here? 4x minus 3. Well, what that means is 4 times x subtract 3. This is an example of an expression right there. What are the numerical coefficients? Well, this is a numerical coefficient. I'll write that down. Numerical coefficient. Numerical coefficient here is 4. Constants. Well, constant is a number, the letter or symbol is fixed. 3 is definitely a constant. And the variable, in this case, is x, is the letter that we're using there for this expression. Here's a more complicated expression. The way you would read this is 4 divided by 3 times pi times r cubed. Now, the numerical coefficient is the number or signs in front of the variable. The variable here is r, and the number that's multiplied by r is 4 over 3 times pi. That's an ugly number, but it is still a number. There are no constants by themselves here, but there is a variable r, which is raised to a power 3. x plus 7 is another expression. It looks like there's no number in front of x, but you might remember that x plus 7 is the same thing as saying 1 times x, that's a 1, times x plus 7. And the numerical coefficient there would be 1, the constant would be 7, and the variable would be x. Let's look at this one, 56 minus 3y. See if you can think about that for a moment. I claim the numerical coefficient is minus 3, the variable is y, and the constant is 56. One of the most common problems is to translate word phrases into expressions. Oftentimes, in our book, we use the word the input to mean a variable. So we would have to use some variable to represent the input. So I'm going to let n equal the input in these problems. 4 less than twice the input. Well, the input is n. Twice the input is 2 times that. 4 less than twice the input would mean subtract 4. There's my expression. The sum of half the input in 7. Here's the input again. Half the input can be written this way. The sum, sum means add. So there we go. The quotient of 5 and triple the input. 3 times the input is triple the input. 
and the quotient of 5 and triple the input. So this is triple the input. Quotient of 5 and triple the input, we write it this way. Okay. Or like this might be more convenient. Six hours of work at n dollars per hour. Well, most of you probably had a job, and you might say that if you work n dollars per hour for six hours, you could write it that way. Typically in algebra, however, we like to write the number in front of the variable. It doesn't really matter, but that's just more typical. Let's look at this one. The product of 4 in the input is then decreased by 3. Okay, 4 times the input would be this. And then you're going to decrease. Decrease means subtract that by 3 to get an expression. Hopefully those problems aren't too difficult for you to understand. Okay, let's take a look at our final example for this section. And that is... Often in word problems, you need to define a variable and set up an equation. These problems are not too difficult, different from those in the example previous before this. Yet, in this case, you have maybe a more realistic setting. So, let's take a look at example six. The input is the number of tickets bought. Each ticket costs, sorry for the misspelling there, $35. Write an equation for the total amount spent on tickets. So I'm going to write this down here. This is example 6a. So each ticket costs $35. So if I want to write an expression for how much I have spent on tickets, I need to know the number of tickets bought. So I might let t equal the number of tickets bought. And what else do I not know? I need an equation for the total amount spent on tickets. So I might need, let C be the total amount spent. So I could say that the total amount spent is 35 times T. Let's look at the second example. The input is the number of rides on the bus. Each bus ride is $1.50. I'm going to write an equation for the total cost of x rides. Notice in this problem, they told us that x is the number of rides on the bus. And I'm going to again let c equal the total cost. So I'm going to come up with an equation that says the total cost is $1.50 times the number of bus rides. There's another equation there. Finally, our last example. You start with a prepaid bus pass good for $20. If the cost per ride is $1.50, I want to write an equation for the value after x rides on the bus. Now, this one might be a little bit more difficult than some of our previous ones. I might make a table for this. I'm going to let x equal the number of bus rides. And I'm going to let v be the value left on the bus pass. Now I'm going to make myself a little table. I'm going to move this up to be, get a little more space here. I'm going to start with x as my input and v as my output. Obviously, if I don't take any bus rides, my value is $20. I still have $20 in the car. If I take one bus ride, I started with $20, but I'm going to take away $1.50 because that's how much it costs for each bus ride. If I make two bus rides, I'm going to start with $20, and I'm going to take away $1.50 for each bus ride. Now, I could take away $1.50 twice, subtract it twice, or I could take $1.50 times 2, subtract that. That would give me 20 minus $3. would give me $17 is left on my account there. 
For 3, what would this be? I'd start again with 20, and I'd subtract $1.50 three times. So what if I want to write down an expression for x? If x is my input, what's the only thing changing here? You'll notice there's a relationship between this expression I've written and the input. So I would write down 20 minus 150x. So value equals 20 minus 150x would be my final equation.